So, uh, welcome back. Another live stream, and this time it's the Dell Inspiron 13 5000 series. This is the new 360 convertible from Dell. And I'll start by saying it's 1.6 kilograms in weight, which isn't light. And it means that you probably won't be using it as a tablet. 360 mode is important for a couple of other things, though. This uh, tabletop mode, coffee mode, presentation mode is pretty useful. Uh, video on a seat back table, for example, gives you a lot more space to put the screen back. That's actually a nice mode. Easel mode, not so sure about that. I've never been a fan of easel mode. And this doesn't have any rubberized uh, parts to the edges, so it's going to slip around uh, as well. Um, so that's a uh, little bit about the 360 mode and the weight of it. But let's start by giving you the uh, the score on it, and that was 79% in our full review. A full review is up now in German and in English on notebookcheck.net for the English one, notebookcheck.com for the German one. 79%. Now there's a couple of things we need to talk about. Weight is one of them. Battery life is the other. I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later, and I'll show you the overall scores. I'm not going to go really deeply into the whole uh, device and uh, test results. You need to go to the website to check that out, and there's a lot of detail there, including a lot of screen detail measurements, even some very detailed measurements on, uh, on the um, performance characteristics of the speakers. So we get right down into that. Heat maps and all sorts of stuff as well. Let's start with the um, screen, though. Now, the screen is a full HD IPS screen, uh, but as you can see there, maximum brightness, 240 nits in the middle, isn't that good. Um, you'll see deltas of four and deltas uh, of four for the color uh, and grayscale. You can get rid of that uh, grayscale inaccuracy, but the color delta remains at about four. That's not too bad, but it's not too great. Uh, the big problem here is that uh, maximum screen brightness, which just really isn't uh, good enough there. Let's just bring that back up. You also see that the uh, RGB coverage 57.39 and the Adobe RGB coverage 36.79 is not very good either. Um, SSD in here is uh, 256 gig SSD and we're getting good speeds out of this. This isn't the well, that device over there with its dual RAID 0 NVMe connected SSDs was at 3.5 gigabytes maximum sequential read speed. That is huge, but this is at 500, a lot less, still good, still very usable. Programs, even big ones, are going to start up very quickly. If you've got a, 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 an SSD on USB 3, you'll be able to transfer files in and out of here very, very quickly. So that's not a bad uh, sequential Read speed there, also look down at 4K read, 4K write, really not uh, bad at all, so no problems with the SSD. 256 gig is really kind of entry level at this price, 1,000 euros for this laptop, so this is not cheap. Uh, it is aiming at a sort of mobile productivity, mobile business um, type of uh, consumer. You see a little bit of wobble on that screen, actually. The hinge is quite tight, but there's still a little bit of wobble on the hinge. You won't get rid of that on these sort of devices. That's part of the... Uh, trade-off you have to make by having um, a two-in-one. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, uh, 16 gigs of RAM in this version, so that's quite nice. That's 16 gigs of RAM is pretty useful. And we've got the Core i7 in this version as well for 1,000. Uh, wanted to give you one uh, performance score, and that is the Cinebench R15. You'll see it was actually ab uh, above some of the other devices we've tested. It's actually a little bit more performant than other devices in its class. Um, go to the full review, you'll see single core test. You'll see us talk about turbo uh, and overheating and down clocking. We did manage to get this to down clock, but only when we put it under our full GPU and CPU load test. That is not really something you'll, you'll do in every day. And in fact, under Cinebench, a really nice 2.8 gigahertz uh, clock speed all the way through the test, which is a good sign that this is cooling, uh, cooling itself down well. So good turbo speeds, getting reasonable performance out of it. Uh, next up, uh, just want to talk about some gaming. We also got some decent, uh, relatively decent. This is not a barrier free gaming device. You'll be looking at sort of 3066 by 768 gaming 
uh, games of a few years ago. There's a couple of examples there. Of course, Bioshock Infinite 2013 we got on load settings, 60 frames a second. So emergency gaming, low-end gaming, old gaming, there's enough performance here on this platform. That's not too bad. Right then, uh, battery life. Now this is one of the issues. 45 watt hour battery inside, you'd expect, well I'd expect on an Ultrabook style device to be getting we usually 10 watts uh, usage under web is a little bit too high. Seven is, is about acceptable and six watts usage is good. We're seeing this at the low end at the 10 watt usage range, so four and a half hour battery life under web browsing. That's not fantastic for 2016. We really would have liked to have seen, especially because this is a 1.6 kilo device, see that up to something like seven or eight hours. My actual opinion is that there might be something going on. There might be some optimizations needed. There might be some drive updates needed. It's not what I expected. So watch out for maybe up to updates, other people's reviews as well. Our reviews are fairly well um, structured and we do them under quite well uh, controlled conditions. So I don't expect it to be too wrong, but I think there may be something going on in the software. Um, in the background that's maybe affecting that. Uh, under load, one and a half hours, that's for gaming or video rendering, um, so not uh, fantastic there. Let's uh, go on to the overview. I want to get to the, uh, excuse me, I'm trying to drive this all from one PC here. Overall scores, there we go. You'll see the overall scores, 79%. You'll see the breakdown of the scores there as well. Not too important. I just want to give you some highs and low lights though. Um, good turbos, low noise, easy maintenance. You can actually get the back off this as well. There's some pictures on the full review. Go and check that out. But on the con side, the battery life we mentioned, the, the bright screen we mentioned, uh, low color space we mentioned, not very good webcam at all. And there's a short key drop on the keys. It's got a backlit keyboard uh, and I actually think the keys are quite solid but our reviewer marked it down for the short throw on the keyboard. At a thousand euros you might want to, to yeah, the, the click point is reasonable, but it is you know, sub, maybe sub one millimeter on that um, on that throw. Uh, so that's the pros uh, and cons there. Let's just quickly take a look around the device so you can have a look at the ports. Let's zoom in for you so you can uh, see around the device. I hope that's going to, to auto focus correctly. But here on this side, you can see HDMI, and we've got a couple of USB 3.1 Rev 1 ports, not Rev 2. And then there's your headphone port there. Uh, that is the power on that side and then let's just spin that around to here and you'll see an SD card reader there not very fast it's uh, only about 25 megabytes per second transfer speed max and that's not very good at all uh, we've seen laptops in fact that last laptop I live tested uh, just a few hours ago was giving us 150 megabytes transfer speed if you're transferring videos onto this uh, 4K videos that you've taken from your camera, for example, that could take a long time to transfer them. Another USB port there, um, and then we've got a volume rocker and the on-off switch there. Let me just uh, quickly show you the, the hinge. That's a classic uh, 360 hinge that goes all the way around like that. Um, seems pretty sturdy. It looks like exactly this hinge that uh, the Yoga used on its original devices. Plastic finish on the top but uh, fairly hard, fairly sturdy. You can take the bottom off this, as I said, and you'll find that information in our full review. So that is the Dell Inspiron 13 5000 series. Um, we scored it at 78%. Uh, not a brilliant score, not a bad score. If you're looking for something with a fair bit of power, uh, one of the highest sort of power levels from this uh, Ultrabook style platform that we've seen could be an interesting one for you, for, for you. But from the perspective of screen brightness, it's an indoor device only. Thank you for watching the live stream. Don't forget to check out the full review at notebookcheck.net or .com for the German version. Don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. Give us some feedback on video quality, audio quality, what you'd like to see in these videos. The reason I'm doing them live is not that I want you to see them live, it's that I want to make sure I get everything done in one go without any edits, uh, and I want to present the full review from the reviewer in as short a time as possible. I hope we've achieved that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next notebookcheck.com live stream. Thanks for watching.